So this is my conservatory at the moment. As you can see, it's a pretty standard um, roof. I do, do you call it polycarbonate or whatever it is? It's plastic anyway, and, I, and it needs cleaning on the outside. <laughs> and there's always a moss from where the um, birds have thrown it down. But this is what I'm dealing with. So my plan is to insulate it this week. I've got all the materials and I'll talk through those as we go along. Um, I've measured it up. So I've measured the lengths um, for the first batons which are going to be attached to these here. Um, and I've got some self-tapping screws to put the wooden batons in for the first uh, section. At the moment we use it as a playroom, which it's not ideal because it's too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer. And if you keep Daddy, toys in here... Socks on now? Have you got your socks on? Yeah. <laughs> and here's my little helper for the week. Well, hopefully he's going to nursery. Um, hey! And... What, you going to nursery? No! Okay, do you need to help me with the DIY then? Yeah. Okay, well we'll see. But if we do keep toys in here, especially these type, they tend to fade really quickly. And we don't want that. So, that's what we're dealing with. I can't rub it. And up. that's what it looks like at the moment. Please Watch this space. For so in order to prep for when my little one is at school tomorrow, I've brought all my materials in. I've got my wooden batons, which are a bit wet at the moment. I bought them from a local builders and merchants and they were stored outside. I'd prefer to buy local than um, the big firms, so I know when I saw them in B&Q they were dry, but I'd rather buy local, so hopefully <clears throat> a bit more heat and they are beginning to dry out a bit, so that's good. That one's getting there. Charging my uh, the battery for my drill. Um, these are the screws that I bought from B&Q because my local builders merchant didn't have them in. Um, so, can you see? Yeah. So they're a self-tapping... Um, 4.8 by 50 mil screw and there's a hundred in the bag. I'm hoping they are suitable for metal. Um, I'm hoping they'll be fine for going through the wood. I'll probably drill a pilot hole in the wood and then into the beam, the metal beam which is behind these uh, plastic covers. So I've got two packets of those. I've got my saw to saw my wood and then this just arrived today. Um, I'll unpack it tomorrow. It's the super quilt which is the uh, one meter by 10 meter size, uh, 1.5 meter by 10 meter size, which I'm going to staple onto the battens when I have battened each of the beams. Today's the day I'm gonna start the project and unfortunately it's absolutely pouring down outside. So I'm gonna to have to do the cutting in here, which isn't ideal, but needs must. Uh, just sort of throw you a couple more bits that I'd bought for the project. I got some aluminium tape, which is going to be joining the um, silver blanket, the joins in it. I bought an industrial heavy duty stapler, staple gun, so that I can staple the blanket to the battens and some staples to go with it. I've got my safety gloves and I've got some goggles ready to wear. Got something to put some music on or a film while I'm working. The first step was to take down the cover. Uh, there was a white piece covering here, which was easy to take down. I just it just had um, like a plastic plug thing that I just pulled out and then the cover came off. I've hoovered under there because there was loads of cobwebs, but at least we can see what we're dealing with now. And I've got the vacuum cleaner ready because I'm sure there'll be lots of dust. So my first plan is to measure my first bit of wood and get that into the ceiling and see how easy it is to do. And hopefully we'll take it from there. I've got my first two <clears throat> pieces of wood on. I've done three of the screws in each, so I did opposites because I figured if I'm measuring one then the opposite one is going to be the same so oh, there's another leaf there um I did a pilot hole into my wood first with a much smaller drill bit and then partly place the screws in and screw them in a little bit before I offered it up to the ceiling and then I went with my electric screwdriver and put them through it is hard work once you get into the metal they go in pretty quickly, but it's hard getting it to grab the metal. But I've done two, so we've got one, two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve to go. It's just gone one o'clock, so it's five past one, and I've got all the 
batons in now it was hard work but if you get the screw right into the center it was easier um so I measured them all up put them all up the ones that are all um one length i've got three screws one in the middle and two on the outside and they do feel very secure so the next step is to have a clean up because i've made a massive mess and then um unwrap the quilt and start offering it up and stapling it. I've just unpacked the super quilt and I was a bit worried at one point because it was so tightly packed that when I undid it, it would blow up like a big pillow, but it's still quite narrow as you can see. So, it's quite thick. You can see the layering on here as well. This end where it's open. So what I plan to do is start over this side staple it on, I'm going to have to cut around that um, and then go all the way to the point where it goes around the corner, cut it there and then do another piece along here. So let's see how this goes. It's just gone four o'clock now and it's starting to go dark so I have just put the lights on in here. I've managed to put up two of the pieces of foil. I've had to cut it around the two um, I don't know what you call them, ceiling supports. So you can tell I'm not professional. And I've put this piece on as well, all the way to there. Um, it needs neatly up there. And then I need to tape the joint that you can see there and tape the bits that are cut on here and here. And I've got some aluminium tape to do that. So I think it's looking okay. My arms are killing me, but obviously that's from working above my head for so long. It's looking all right. End of day one. Um, I've not got much further than my last update. So I had to put on this last piece that goes across here. Um, but as you can see, it's completely dark outside now and I've got to go and do some other things. So that's where I'm gonna leave it for now. And hopefully start again tomorrow. Just another quick update to show you where I'm up to now. So on my last video, I think I finished it where, so this is the back, the outside wall. Um, where I'd got the insulation up to about there. Uh, I then put the insulation continuing all the way around. I patched the bit in the ceiling with the last of it and then I ran out and I had this tiny little area, probably about that. Oops, a daisy. That's just a toy falling down. I had this tiny little area that didn't have any insulation. I didn't want to buy another roll because it, it only comes in really long lengths. So, from Amazon I bought this other type of insulation and I've triple layered it. It's almost like a bubble wrap. Um, and then I've sealed all the joins with the tape. You can't even really see the... So there's a join here, but because the silver tape's over it, you can't really see it. I've then moved on to doing the battens on top of the foil, which... Um, so I start at the bottom doing the long ones first, did the ones going up, and then I've started to fill them in. So the first one is the 90, uh, the length of the plasterboard. I'll show you that piece in a minute. Um, and then I've battened in between. So that between that one and that one is 90. And then I've battened in between to fix the plasterboard on. I've done my next one up at 90. Um, then my next job after that is to put on a middle one again. I've done that bottom one over there as you can see and then I've got this piece of wood reserved for that one over there but I can't get to that one at the moment because of the furniture so I have to move the furniture to do that side so I thought I'd just carry on with one side at a time now I bought the plasterboard and what I wanted to do obviously I've not finished the battens but I wanted to make sure that I've bought the right type of plasterboard I've bought the right type of screws and that I can actually do this so I put my first piece on just to see how it fixes the plan is not to carry on with any more plasterboard now until I've done all the battens. I need to figure out how I'm going to do this centre bit. Oh, it's making me dizzy looking at this. Uh, how I'm gonna do this centre bit in the ceiling here. So this, from here across to here and back again, is going to have a flatter piece. Um, but I need to figure out how to do that. And I can't remember if I'd shown you on the last video uh, whether I'd taken down the light fitting or not. So we took down the old light fitting. I say we, um, my husband helped because it was really heavy. The, I took down the old light fitting. Obviously, I turned the electrics off first. I've put in this new really basic um, 
and do they call them pen pendants or something and i've also had to fit this extra wire here because this um the old light had a fan on it and it was switched at the actual light it had sort of pull cords so it didn't have a switch so i've had to put in um a switch temporarily which i've just uh, got here for that light now i'm no electrician so i'm not going to show you how to do that um electric is really dangerous i followed youtube i took it really carefully i made sure everything was off so I don't want to endorse doing electrics. Um, I've done them before, have a little bit of knowledge, but if you're unsure at all, just get an electrician in because it's way safer to do that. Um, and then the plan is that this is just a temporary light so that when I'm working in here, I can actually have a light. So it does work. I'll just show you. Um, but eventually when I've put the plasterboard in and finished it off, I want to put a proper ceiling light in there, but I can't do any of that until we've uh, done the ceiling again I say wait it's just me doing this anyway that's where I'm up to this was the material I used to cover that patch in the middle that I didn't have the enough super quilt for because I couldn't get a small piece of super quilt I ordered it off Amazon it's called insulation um, it's quite thin on its own so it's very much like bubble wrap I suppose it is bubble wrap really with just silver foil on each side um, and I used it so when I did it I quadrupled it over so a bit like sort of that thickness really, if you can imagine that. And then stapled it into the gap and then taped up all my seams. And that's the piece that I've got left. So I tried to use it all, I'm not going to use it for anything else so I may as well put it up there for extra insulation. It's quite uh, easy to work with. Just doing a ceiling update. I've had to work quite slowly because of having to work Christmas and looking after three children. So. I managed to get all the battens up. I can't remember. I think last time I'd done most of this side. And possibly these. I'm not sure. Anyway, I finished them all along here. And as you can see, I've put my first, what would you say, layer? No, tier? Tier <laughs> of plasterboard in. It's not perfect. It's got gaps. But I guess I'm going to fill those. Um, there's a larger gap over here, which you can see. But I'll figure it out taking it slowly and considering I've lifted them all myself and they weigh 12 kilos each that one was a full one so that's 12 kilos and I've managed to screw it in and kind of get it mostly straight it's not completely straight but I'm figuring it out as I go along I've done it all by myself so yeah so the next plan is to put I want to make a frame for this bit so that I can have a flat surface with some spotlights in it. I think I'm going to do spotlights. I'm not entirely sure yet whether I'm going to get a light fitting or spotlights. Anyway, I need to build some sort of lightweight frame here so that I've got something to put flat plasterboard on. And then I think I'll do the last, the second tier up so that I know where I'm aiming for. I think. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to have a go at this next before I do the other bits of plasterboard. Next update, it's now Saturday 9th of January. I've had a couple of days annual leave from work so I've been able to crack on with getting it done. So you'll see most of the plasterboard, apart from this top section now, is um, complete. By complete I mean it's attached to the framework. Um, there was a few, I'd run out of plasterboard the other day and I couldn't get to get any more so what I did start with is doing the joins, so taping them and then putting the, um, what's it called? I'm using this, it's called uh, Make Good Jointing and, can you see it? Jointing and Filling Ready Mixed. So I'm using that to um, go over the joins with. I've been watching some YouTube videos about how to do it. I bought some more tools, so I've got this jointing... Uh, taping knife, sorry. Ooh, like a mirror. And then um, this, which I actually haven't used yet, so I might not need it. Plastering hook. I was going to use it to put the jointing compound on, but I've been using a different tool, which are currently uh, drying out in the other room because I used them the other day. So you'll see these joints aren't done because that piece of plasterboard and that piece of plasterboard were additions that I had to make after I'd got more plasterboard. Um, so I've started, show you a bit closer, 
um, doing the joins. I am absolutely no expert, I'm just trying to do it as I go along. See, the bigger ones, the ones that you hear before, you'll remember had quite a big gap on them. So I've had to use the, um, the tape that's like a fiberglass tape rather than the paper tape on those because I had to fill the gap. So there's one there and there's one there. You'll see that um, some parts of this you can't actually see the fiberglass tape and some bits you can, but that's because I'm only on layer one of doing it. So I think I need to do two or three layers to, to make it nice and wide. So that's too narrow at the moment. It needs to be much wider across here and across here so that the surface is completely smooth and you don't see the join. It's gonna take me a while, but I'm not on a deadline. It'll look good in the end. I've decided not to um, plaster the ceiling because I didn't want the extra weight and it's not one of my skill sets. And if I was going to start learning to plaster, I should probably do it on a flat surface and not a roof. So, the plan is, rightly or wrongly, this is, this is just what I'm doing. I'm not telling you it's the right thing to do, but I'm going to use this um, paint, which is been recommended on one of the YouTube videos and it, it's a paint and a primer so I don't have to prime the surface because obviously plasterboard is just covered in this paper so it's very porous so some people um, apart from doing the plaster if you're not doing the plastering they put um, a primer on it first and then paint it but I'm going to use that two in one in the hope that it will actually work um, you can see here as well where I've been covering the screw holes and making those flat so that when I do finally paint it, you won't actually see those. So my next job, I've made a bit of a frame. Um, I don't know if you can see on the top. So it just comes a little bit further down so that I can put a piece of plasterboard across here and then I can joint it on this side and this side. So I've cut the piece of plasterboard, it's just down here, and I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to do the roof section, the very top of it, in two sections. So the first bit is going to go from here to here, and then from here to here. Because I've got this light fitting to pop through the plasterboard as well, and I've actually ordered a new light fitting for there, which has arrived, so you'll see that in the next part of the video, probably. I've just put the thermometer back in here just to see what the temperature is like. I used to have this in here, um, but it, it ran out of battery and then I forgot. So 1.9 outside, 13.2 inside, and that's without any heating at the moment. We do have this radiator in here, this plug-in radiator, but it's not on. See, it's not on. Um, so that's improved it a lot because I think it would be a lot colder in here without the roof at the moment. And it's not finished, so I'm quite happy with that. Another update, it's now about a week later. It's a Saturday again. I've had to work all week, so I've not been able to work on the roof. Um, I've probably spent about an hour and a half this morning just trying to, um, this obviously needs doing, just ignore that part, but smooth out um, and joint the areas. That will obviously need doing as well, but I managed to do that bit. It's not really focusing very well. And then that bit's kind of mostly done. That bit's kind of done. The lower bit is and that bit, but I'll need to smooth out this area here, probably using some sandpaper. That one's looking good. That was done a little while ago. And then I've gone all the way along and kind of done that part there and that part and then kind of that will need doing. And I've done a little bit at the top, done a bit more at the top, done that bit, done that bit. So you can see where I'm up to with the jointing. Slow and steady, but I'll get there in the end. This is going to be the last video now. I um, have finished jointing. I sanded down where I needed to sand down and then I've done my first layer of painting. It's looking good. It does look a bit patchy in parts, but that's because I just need to do another uh, coat of the paint. I've done the first, that's that side done. This one's pretty much done. And then this third side I've still got to finish, but because I'm working loads at the moment, I haven't got time to do it. So I'll just have to wait until uh, I get some time off. There is, um, I'm using a different camera as well. So there's like two spots on this camera because the camera needs fixing. Um, but you can see where it, it once it's got another um, coat of the paint, it's going to look fab. Pretty pleased with how it looks. You can see the top bit means redoing the coat paint. Oh, this is the light feature I've got. I'm not really sure about it. I don't know. It looks good when it's on. I don't know. We'll see. I might change it yet. Um, but yeah, I'll try and list all the materials that I've used in the description. But if you do have any questions, please ask a question in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. It's uh, way warmer in here now, so let me see the temperature. So it's 10 degrees outside and it's 15 degrees inside without any heating on. It's, um, yeah, really pleased with it. It's cost a lot less than I had the quotes for. It's taken me a while, but that's because I've had to keep stopping because of work and not actually having the time to do it. 
I reckon if I'd have had a solid week off work, I could have done it in a week, easy. Probably a few days, but I just haven't had the time. And then, as you can see, this side just still needs finishing. So there's still a bit of sanding to do over here in the joins, but, um, and a couple of coats of paint. Yeah, really happy with it. Please ask any questions if you've got any questions.